Okay, so we just made some changes to the scroll pane class and saved it in a new class. And then off screen, I renamed these class methods to have a lowercase, which you basically do just by taking the message name and changing it, in this case, from a capital N to a little n, and uh, saving it which automatically renames it. Then I deleted the extra messages that I didn't want to have because they were the wrong capitalization. And it's good to be consistent with programming because it's confusing enough even if you are consistent. So, let's start. I'm going to make that array of parts of the window so we can see what's going on easier. I scroll window. Stray typo. And there we have our window which we will resize. Now let's look and see what we get with my scroll window. We can inspect it or I'll just do this. My scroll window and then print out the contents, which is nil. That's because I misspelled my scroll window. My scroll window. Cling on or something. Alright, so we get an array, a systems window, a scroll pane, and a paste up more. So, what we want to work with is the paste up more. So, let's say paste up morph. equals my scroll window and since we know that my scroll window is an array we could say at three which would give us the third item or there's a shortcut method called third and now when we do it we see that we have a variable with a paste up morph object so let's let's create something new. Let's uh, let's create a little drawing area inside this window we have. So we're going to go my image morph colon equals image morph new. Okay, image morph is. Basically, it's a little morph that holds an image, a picture of some kind. And paste up morph, add morph, my image morph. So we've cr we're creating a new image morph, and then we're adding it to the paste up morph, which is embedded within this window. You can think of it as transparent pieces of paper. The window itself is a frame, and then you have the scroll pane embedded on top of it, and then you have the paste up morph embedded inside the scroll pane, and it'll move around. So when we add the image morph to the paste up morph, scroll up a little bit, we will see we have this cute little nested rectangle thingy. Well, that's kind of small and it's already got something in it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut and paste because I've got a lot of typing to do here. We're going to add or we're going to create a new form that's going to be as big as the extent, that is to say the the full extent of our drawing area which goes out to this very edge of the gray border here 
So the form is going to have the same extent as the paste up morph, and it's going to have a color depth, that is to say, um, how many colors can it use? Well, it can handle 2 to the 32nd colors. Well, it turns out that that's including eight shades of transparency, so it's really only 2 to the 24th colors, which is only 16 million colors. But, all right, we'll do this little line of code. And notice our cute little rectangle thing disappeared. Now, we're going to add a pen object, or associate a pen object, with that um, image morph. And we're going to uh, say it's going to have A nib size, that is to say, how big is the 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 pen going to look on the screen? It's going to be a square nib that's three by three. Now we're going to place our pen in the let's make sure that we've done all this. We're going to place our pen at fifty fifty, which is approximately right here, and then we're going to tell my pen to go somewhere, which won't move the pen, but it'll actually remind it to draw something. But nothing happened. Oh no, why is that? Well, because we haven't told our window that it's changed, and it's not going to do anything. Now, if I were to bring the window to the front, you would see a little dot magically appear, but that's kind of clumsy. So instead, from now on, we're going to do the code window changed when we make a change. So let's, let's, let's play with this for a second. We're going to place my pen at, oh, say, first let's make it larger, five. And my place it at, uh, 60.55 and tell it to draw itself in place and tell the window that it changed and of course it really didn't show much because ah, let's try that again let's move it over about 75 Okay. Oh, you know why window didn't change? Because I forgot to grab the window. Let's go back up here. Remember, our window was the first item in this list, and I forgot to do that. So, my window colon equals my scroll window. It's an array, remember? first. And now we're going to put the first item of this array into the my window variable. And that's going to be a reference to our window. And now, whenever we do a window changed, let's try it again. There we go. Small talk is nice and forgiving. If I had done that with an uninitialized variable, it would have just said message not understood because I was trying to change, send the changed message to nil. But since I had been experimenting with this earlier and my window already contained a variable, which was off screen because I closed it, it went ahead and said my window changed to a invisible window, which you can't see. So, anyway, at least now we know. Now, there's other things you can do with a pen. You can say, oh, my 
a pen color and let's make it a nice green color green this tells the color class to create a new color object and this is a nice convenience method that does what it needs to behind the scenes and returns a color of green so let's try this again let's overwrite something and there we go okay this is nice but you know it's a little I don't know lame I mean it doesn't do anything but here's where, where things start to get interesting I'm gonna paste in this code now look at what this code does it says for 1 to 720 do and it's going to place the values 1 to 720 one at a time into this X variable the colon X means it's a variable coming from outside the code block that's the end of the variables and it's going to say my pen place at X comma Y where Y is 150 minus 2 times the degrees well let's get rid of that 2 times for right now X degrees sine times 50 let's get rid of the 50 right now oh and one last thing we should do my my image yes my form so it's a uh, we need to grab the form that's associated with my image more so let's put that at the top so it's out of the way we only do it once I should have done it some time ago now notice that I can select any individual line of code but since I've done them in order if I wanted to do this entire thing hopefully it wouldn't mess up we're not going to do that right now but what I've done is I've grabbed the form associated with my image the form is actually the drawing bits it's a bit of memory where you can directly manipulate it so anyway we now have my form make sure we've done it and now we're going to go down here and add the ever important my form fill white now what does that do? Assuming no typos, nothing happens until I say window changed and it makes it white. All right, now let's go analyze our code. We're sending 1 to 720 into the variable x and we're saying place it at x, place my pen at x at 150 minus x degrees radian degrees to radian sign well what does that do well and then go and then wait and window changed and then fork we'll analyze this all in a second let's just do it ah so let's try that again after we do a my window changed and it drew pretty much a straight line well, let's make sure we have the correct variable there. And um, let's try something a little more fancy. Times 10. Now you'll start to see what's going on. Select this entire thing. Do it. There it goes. All right. 
Cool. Now let's go back to the times 50. Select it. Do it. Okay. Now we have drawings. So what is going on? Well, the window starts off up here at 0, 0. That's the point 0, 0, right at the very corner. And then it goes 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. But it's also going downward 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 0, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, down here to 150. So, we know that sine of 0 is 0, and we want it halfway down the screen, so we subtract everything from 150, and that'll make sure everything starts at 150. And then it's a little less than 150, and a little greater than 150, and if we want, we can make that a, a nice big sine wave. And let's change the pin color to red. Pin color red. There's my kitty. And there we go. And to show you that this is indeed still there, it's drawing into the scrollable area off the window. We'll resize it slightly. And there you see several different values for a sine wave. And now you know how to draw into a window. In our next lesson, we will sit there and put this all into its own method so you don't have to do this. We'll have done it once, and every time we want a new window with a drawing area, we'll just say, new drawing window.